In this lecture, we will discuss about aircraft's lateral directional dynamic stability. Let's start by looking at the simplest case of a one degree of freedom pure rolling motion. Uh, pure rolling motion without yawing or side slipping um, can be obtained in a wind tunnel model where the aircraft is free to roll in x axis only. So, to analyze this motion, we start by writing the equation, um, the equation of motion using Newton's second law. And then we apply small perturbation variables and expand the moment terms, and then we'll get this equation of motion. So in here, um, so this term describes the rolling moment due to aileron deflection, um, and this term right here describes the roll damping moment. If, if we rearrange the equation, and if we rewrite, the moment in terms of stability derivatives will get this equation for pure rolling motion. Um, so we can see that the rolling dynamics is described by phi double dot, uh, which is the angular velocity of the roll angle, uh, delta p, which is the change in the roll rate, and also the input, um, the input is the change in the aileron deflection. Uh, we can also see that there, there are two stability derivatives affecting the rolling motion. We will see later that this LP stability derivative, which is the roll damping moment, directly affects the root and the time constant of the rolling motion. Um, so for a special case where the center of gravity of the aircraft is constrained, like in a wind tunnel model, we can align the body frame and the inertial frame. Um, note that this uh, phi, uh, which is the Euler roll angle, it's always described in the earth fixed frame, while uh, P, which is the roll rate, is always described in body fixed frame. But in this case, where we align the body frame um, and the inertial frame, we can actually assume that the change in the inertial roll rate angle velocity, phi dot, is the same as the body fixed roll rate P. So it will be much easier now if we use all body fixed parameters in our equation as opposed to a mix of Euler angle with the body fixed rates. Um, so, so now we change the variable phi double dot to p dot and our equation is simplified and we can see that our output variable is the roll rate p and the input variable is the aileron deflection. So, uh, so this is a first order system because the highest derivative um, is the first time derivative, p dot. Um, we can compare this equation with a general first order system equation characteristic um, where we can find the, that the time constant is inversely proportional to the roll damping. Uh, note that this Roll, uh, this derivative, LP, is actually a negative value uh, for a statically stable aircraft. So then the time constant is actually a positive value. So we don't have a negative time constant. Um, the time constant, it defines the characteristics of the first order system. Uh, the time constant indicates how fast is the response. Um, so if we find the solution um, of this differential equation to a step input, in this case, um, where we have a step input in the aileron deflection, uh, we can plot the time response of the aircraft rolling motion. Um, so this is the graph uh, of the aircraft's roll rate versus time. Uh, PSS here is the steady state roll rate value that has been demanded through the aileron deflection. So the response graph here, it shows how the aircraft responds to the steady state roll rate input demand. We can see here if tau is large, the response is slower, and if tau is small, the aircraft response is faster. The equation down here, it describes how we can compute the steady state roll rate uh, given a specific degree of aileron deflection. And this equation is actually derived directly from, uh, from the solution here, where the steady state roll rate is obtained by plug-in 
uh, a very large value for the time t into this equation. So if t is very large, then this exponential uh, will reduce to nearly zero. So then we'll get the steady state roll rate value. So, so now let's analyze the steady state roll rate equation a little bit more. If we plug in the equation for these two stability derivatives, uh, and note that the empirical equations for the stability derivatives are all available in your textbook. Uh, so if we rewrite the stability derivatives um, and rearrange some terms, and it turns out that most of the variables cancel out, then we get this equation down here. So what can we get from this equation? Um, notice here that we have the term Cl delta A. And remember, from previous chapter, we've discussed that Cl delta A is called the aileron effectiveness. And if you can recall, the aileron effectiveness uh, can be computed using several parameters, and one of it is the flap ratio. So flap ratio is used to determine the size of the aileron with respect to the size of the wing. So essentially here, we have an equation that relates the aileron deflection with the sizing of the aileron. So if we want to design the aircraft such that it has a certain rolling dynamic characteristics, we could use this parameter as a baseline for sizing the aileron control surface. Uh, we first restrict uh, the maximum roll rate for the aircraft. Um, uh, you define the criteria. For example, you do not want the roll rate to be too high because that would make the aircraft bank too quickly. It would be uncomfortable to passengers um, as well as it will drop, jeopardize the structural integrity of the airplane. We also do not want the roll rate to be too small either because that would make a very sluggish airplane that turns too slowly. So we restrict the maximum roll rate and we also take account the wingspan and the airspeed when we do that. So then that would restrict the maximum allowable aileron deflection uh, for the aircraft. And that also translates to a proper sizing of the aileron. Okay, so now let's go back to examining the aircraft's roll rate step response. Note that this is a first order motion and it is a first order system we can write the row mode transfer function like this and we can find that the steady state uh, row rate is given by this equation and the time constant is given by this equation note that both of these equations um, are inversely proportional to the roll damping stability derivative so this indicates that this stability derivative is important in describing the dynamics of a rolling motion. So essentially, if we have a high value of roll damping, that, that would mean that um, uh, the steady state roll rate and the time constant would be small. So now let's shift our discussion to the first uh, degree of freedom motion of a pure yawing. To analyze the motion, we follow the same procedures as before, where we start by writing Newton's equation of motion, then we apply small perturbation, um, we apply small perturbation parameters, and then we expand the uh, yawing moment term. We also rewrite the uh, moment in terms of stability derivatives. Um, for this special case, where the center of gravity is constrained, we align the body frame with the inertial frame. So then the, it means that the side slip angle is the same as the yaw angle. And the Euler yaw angular velocity is the same as the body fixed yaw rate. Um, we then get uh, this equation of motion for yawing. Let's assume that the uh, influence of the rate of change of the side slip angle to the yawing moment is small. So the term n beta dot is small, so we neglect that in our equation of motion. So now we have this yawing dynamic equation of motion that we can analyze. Uh, note that we have 
uh, in this case we have a second order differential equation because we have a second time derivative of the yawing motion. So from the differential equation, we can easily find its characteristic equation. And if we compare that to the general order, uh, general second order characteristic equation, um, we found out that the natural frequency is influenced by this parameter and the damping ratio is influenced by this parameter. So depending on the values of these stability derivatives, we'll get a specific value of the damping and frequency. And if we plot the response graph, we'll get different response shapes depending on the values of the damping and the frequency of the system.